Good morning, my amazing quilting rock stars, and welcome to our Tuesday mini workshop. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Today, we're going to be talking about how to practice free motion quilting. And this masterclass mini workshop, whatever you want to call it, is for you if you're trying to up your free motion quilting game, if you have just joined Free Motion Quilting Academy and you want to know how you can practice the motifs you're going to be learning, if you've got some motifs in your tool belt but you want to get better at them, basically if you're interested in free motion quilting, you are in the right place. So let me get this pulled up on my computer so that I can see you guys. Let me get it shared. I am so, so, so excited to have you here. Let's see, where are we at? We're on the String of Story page. Okay. What an amazing week, guys. Free Motion Quilting Academy is open for enrollment, and there are over 360 of you who have jumped in. It is phenomenal. There is so much going on. Oh, brilliant. I already see that over 30 of you are here with me. Fabulous. Let me pin this to the top of the page so you guys can find it easily. Let me share it to the Quilting Rock Stars so that they can join us. Hey, Ella. Hey, Renee. Barbara. Cindy. I see you guys. Pat. Jackie. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'm sure I didn't see everyone, but I wanted to catch who I do see. Let's see. Where's my share? Hmm. To a group. Here we go. Come practice with us. All right. Brilliant. We are banging on all cylinders now. Wow, you guys are logging in. Oh, I see all of you. While you guys are logging in, let me walk you through the links you're going to find in the caption of this video, and then we'll kind of get down to business. Okay, first of all, the very first link you're going to see is a link to a blog post about what we're going to discuss today. This blog post is especially important if you went through the Free Motion Quilting Launchpad or if you're joining me for Free Motion Quilting Academy. It's going to become a, a bit of a user guide for you as you're practicing Free Motion Quilting in the weeks and months to come, okay? Number two, Free Motion Quilting Academy is open for enrollment. This is my 12-week signature course to guide you from being a nervous beginner free motion quilter to a confident intermediate quilter by Christmas. So much has happened in 2020. Let's reclaim some of this year and carve out some space to learn a new skill, to invest in our quilting, which brings us joy, to finish some quilts for the people that we love. And on New Year's Eve, if nothing else, be able to say, you know what? A lot of stuff happened in 2020, but I also learned to free motion quilt like a rock star. So enrollment is open through Saturday. You'll find details at the link in the caption of this video. The third link you're going to find is for my masterclass, your free motion quilting secret sauce. This is a free masterclass. I've got a couple left this week. The first part of the masterclass is all about teaching you about quilting plans, how to find your secret sauce for making quilting plans so that you can make your own roadmap for what to quilt where instead of feeling overwhelmed by that process. And then I give you all the details for Free Motion Quilting Academy in the back half of our time together. So three links. Hope that you will check them all out. And I really, really hope that you're joining me inside of Free Motion Quilting Academy. We get started officially on Monday and I'm so excited about it. Now, let's talk. You are investing in your sanity. Tanya, that is a line that will sell, girl. I love it. I love it so much. I feel the same way about quilting. So quick sidebar. I'm going to just, I'm going to indulge a sidebar because many of you are new here and you don't know a lot about my story. And usually that's not necessarily relevant, but in a time like right now, I think maybe it is. Um, I started quilting after I gave birth to my first son, Jem. Jem is now five and a half years old. 14 months later, I had Ian, who is four and a half years old. Um, and after I had Jem, we had gotten pregnant very easily. And so I had gone back on birth control very early and my mood was all over the place, but I just attributed it to the birth control. And spoiler, we got pregnant with Ian very quickly because of that misattribution. What I discovered after Ian is that my moodiness postpartum was in fact very severe postpartum depression. And my quilting was, oh my gosh, Sandy, I love it. My quilting was my sanity. Um, I was blessed to have two kids who, when they slept, they slept hard, they slept well. Uh, but I'm a very active person. I like to be very engaged in things. And it was hard for me to be home uh, when, with them sleeping for hours at a time. And then as they continued to grow, just to be home, kind of keeping them safe. And it felt like the dishes always needed to be done. The diapers always needed to be changed. Someone always needed to be eaten. Nothing that I did stayed done, but quilting stayed done. 
You finished the Monster Nine Patch, Mari. Oh, I want to see pictures. I want to see pictures. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, it was very exciting. Um, but quilting stayed done, and quilting became my sanity and my outlet through what turned out to be three very long, very hard years of postpartum depression. So this journey uh, had a recent conclusion for me just in the last couple of years of I felt my mental health uh, getting back to a more stable place. Trust me, like many of you, the pandemic has been very hard with that. And that's why I wanted to share the story right now, because Tanya said that by jumping into Free Motion Quilting Academy, she's investing in her sanity. And I think there's something, um, I'm not a therapist, it's not really therapy, but I think there's something very therapeutic about quilting, about working with our hands, about making something from scratch, the rhythms of quilting, and also the community. So I, like Tanya said, I think it is an investment in your sanity. I think it's an investment in uh, just health as we can, you know, seek for it in this time. So I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, Mari, yes, I agree. Quilting, <laughs> Mari says quilting kept my two little boys alive. Yeah, yeah, because it kept me functional to be their mom. I feel that so hard. Um, so anyway, there's a little, little backstory on that. So if you're looking for a therapeutic outlet in this very difficult year, if you are looking for a warm and inviting and encouraging community to join, in this very difficult year, if you are looking for a sense of mastery over a new skill, a sense of accomplishment in this very difficult year, Free Motion Quilting Academy is a beautiful, beautiful place to find that. All right? Love it. So like I said, you'll find um, details at the link to Free Motion Quilting Academy in the caption of this video. If you want to hear me talk your ear off about it later today or later this week, please jump into the master class. I'll do some teaching around quilting plans, and then I'll give you all the details. All right? Now, let's jump into how to practice free motion quilting. So guys, today I have just one camera because the exact motif I'm quilting is not our focus today. I'm gonna to be quilting a meander. If you took free motion quilting launch pad, I taught you the meander last week. We spent some time under my needle looking at it in detail. But today really is about zooming out and looking at this big picture of how do I practice this skill, right? This is a question I get a lot of like, how long is it going to take me to master a motif? How do I master a motif? How do I really move through Free Motion Quilting Academy with success? Okay, and I'm going to show you today my method for practicing Free Motion Quilting. The first link in the caption of this video, once again, is a blog where I have all this typed out with some time estimates for like a real like cushy practice session, okay? We're not going to necessarily go through it along those same timelines today. But I want to model for you what it looks like when I'm learning a new motif, when I'm practicing a motif I haven't used in a little while, um, when I'm working towards being, you know, on a quilt, maybe I'm nervous about quilting this quilt because it's precious to me, and I want to make sure that I have warmed myself up, okay? So the very first thing that I'm going to do when I sit down to quilt is I'm going to obviously have my machine. I'm going to make sure I have my supplies handy. I have my gloves. I have my seam ripper. I've got a cleaned out bobbin race right? I've got my machine threaded. Ideally, I would have a full bobbin. Right now, it is not exactly a full bobbin because, you know, I did some quilting with you guys last week, but my space is set up. Simultaneously, I've also made sure that I've got doodling supplies. So a pad of paper, a marker or a pen or pencil, whatever floats your boat. And then over here, I have a practice sandwich. We're going to use this practice sandwich in a little while to test our tension and also to practice our motif before we move on to the quilt. If you are working on um, a really precious quilt and you're doing something particular in each block, um, it would not hurt to have either an extra block or simply take a ruler and draw the block out like in chalk pencil on your practice sandwich if you want to actually practice your quilting plan, not just a particular motif, okay? But more on that in a second. So we always baby step into the swimming pool of free motion quilting, all right? Personally, when it comes to actually swimming, I am very much a, like jump in with both feet, like get in the cold water kind of situation. But when it comes to quilting, we really do want to step our way in. We work on paper first, then we work on practice sandwiches, then we work on our quilt, okay? And this is because we don't want to seam rip on the quilt, if at all humanly possible. If something is going to go sideways, we want it to go sideways here. Obviously, we are humans. Things do not come out perfectly. I literally wrote in an email this morning that we got to focus on progress, not perfection. 
right? And I want you to hold that in your mind, but even so, set yourself up for success, okay? Oh my gosh, Helen, you've got 10 tops ready to cold. That's, I think I have eight or 10 as well. And I'm kind of excited about it. I'm like, I'm just gonna spend the winter like hunkered down quilting. It's gonna be great. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, if you have questions as we're going along, do drop them in the comments. I don't think Kate is here with me today, which is fine. Um, so drop them in the comments. I will try to keep an eye on them, but if I miss it, like don't, you know, holler at me. All right, so first up, like I said, I'm quilting the meander today, so this is gonna be real simple. I'm just gonna practice filling in some space, right? Now you guys will notice this time I decided to start at the bottom, and part of that is so you guys can see what I'm doing. This is a big meander. We talked about this a little bit at the end of last week, but if you watched the Free Motion Quilting Launchpad with me last week, you will notice that there is a difference in the size of motif. I'm able to quilt on this machine, this is my Juki Industrial Machine, versus my tabletop Singer Domestic Machine that I was working on with you guys last week. Now, I've been Free Motion Quilting for a hot minute at this point, so I learned, because I learned to Free Motion Quilt very early in my quilting journey, which is another question I got today. If you are a newbie quilter, can you learn free motion quilting? Yes. And I would say this is the ideal time to learn before anybody tells you you're supposed to be scared of it because you don't need to be scared of it. But as we move past the beginning stage of something, we put more expectations on ourselves. So while you are in that I am learning, I am new mindset, go ahead and learn free motion quilting too. Okay. Now, because I have been quilting for a hot second, I'm, I'm usually pretty good, I'm not perfect at this, I'm usually pretty good at matching motifs. So, so far on this quilt, even though I started it on my smaller domestic, the meanders I've been doing on here have been matching pretty well. Hopefully that will continue. Um, but what I'm drawing here is definitely bigger. It allows you to see them a little bit more and it's just kind of fun, right? Let's see. I love it, Kate. I love it. Oh, Joe Beth, we are just gonna have a quilting party this fall. Karen says, I'm having trouble getting my tension and stitches to come out right. Any suggestions? So Karen, it's going to depend a little bit on like what's going sideways. Um, one of the things I always like to remind my quilters of is make sure you're lifting that presser foot while you adjust your tension and lower it back down when you're done to help this, the feed dogs kind of reset. I'm going to get like blueberry brain from the scented marker if I don't put a cap on it. Um, so that would be one recommendation. Make sure everything's cleaned out really well, re-thread. Some of it is gonna be just a little bit of fiddling. Um, yeah, so Karen, give me more details and I'll see if I have more detailed recommendations. Man, then you just need to speed up, babe. Yep, so think about driving a car, right? I like to use this, yes, Ella says, learn it now. Yep, Karen, stitch length is gonna just simply come with practice. I know no one likes it when I tell them that, but that's just true. So man, and think about driving a car. If you've got, you know, you're making, let's say you're making a left-hand turn, right? You do not drive to the middle of the intersection and then very slowly inch your way to the left, right? Because what would happen? Either your car would stop or you would drift like into oncoming traffic, right? You have to have momentum to get around that curve crisply. The same is true of a right-hand turn. We just don't feel it as much in our body. So think about a left-hand turn because I think it'll be easier to picture. Unless you are in like England or Europe where you're driving on the left side where the cross traffic turn for you is a right turn, then think about a right turn, okay? Um, so whatever your cross traffic turn is, where you are, think about that turn because that's where your body's gonna feel this more as you think about it. When we go to make a left-hand turn, we slow down before the white line, right? As you're heading in, you've got your arrow and you're like, let me slow down a little bit. But once you cross the white line, and you may not have ever thought about this a whole lot, chances are very good. In fact, I can almost guarantee it, you in fact hit the gas. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Why? Because of centrifugal force, right? If you don't hit the gas, your car is gonna drift out into traffic. To stay tight on your turn, you have to actually give the car some additional momentum. The same thing is true with our quilting. Right, when we are taking these turns, we actually need to speed up a little bit to get around those curves in order to make them smooth. That's really hard for our brains when we're first getting started because we're nervous. And we're focused on the curve and we're focused on our hands and we're not thinking about our foot pedal. It's very normal, 
very normal. And it, you'll fix it in the blink of an eye. One day, like probably like tomorrow, you'll look at it and be like, oh, hey, like my meanders are a lot smoother all of a sudden, right? It's because you're relaxing. You're thinking about, let me get a little more momentum. You got to just think of it like driving, okay? Like here we go. And this will be true when we're working on swirls as well. Making them nice and smooth, it takes a lot of oomph to get all the way in and then all the way back out, okay? All right, hopefully that helps. Yay, Lorinda, I'm glad that you're liking that. Brilliant. Okay, so step one of my practicing is to doodle. Now, with just a meander, I'm not giving a whole lot of thought to how I'm doing these doodles, right? There's not a whole lot of processing to be done other than simply, you know, filling the space. Now, you can see I changed the size again after talking about it, right? Music on helps, yes, creating some momentum in your environment. That's a great, great tip. Um, oh my gosh, Lorinda, I love that. I love that you guys are having that conversation. Yeah, my, my dad and I had lots of conversations about that when I was learning to drive. So with this meander, I'm not doing a whole lot of processing other than making sure that I fill the space well. But if I was working on a more complicated motif, I would really be talking myself through, like here's the first part, you know, to make my feather, I'm going to make my stem and retrace it back down and we're going to work up the right side and I'm going to bump myself up, right? Pep talk yourself, talk through the procedure of your motif and if you're working on like a quilting plan of your quilting plan, first I'm going to quilt the setting triangles, then I'm going to work on the center of the block, then I'm going to work my way back out, right? Talk yourself through the process, whether it's actually audibly or just in your head, depending on whether or not you're a full verbal processor. Um, but this is the time to really put a lot of words around it so you can internalize that process. You want it to feel nearly instinctual by the time you get to the quilt. Now, a complicated quilting plan is not going to feel truly instinctual, right? I usually keep a complicated quilting plan off to the side while I'm quilting so I can reference it. Uh, but still, just having had this warm up, Right? It's kind of like, um, well, I'm trying to think. When I learned how, I'm, I'm trying to keep the driving analogy, and I think the driving analogy is going to break down. So I'm going to use a dancing analogy, okay? This is like if you're a dancer, I was a pre professional ballerina. So backstage, before, so Barbara, I'm just doing a meander today, and I'm not teaching the technique of the motif itself. We're talking through the big picture of practice. I taught the meander inside the Pre Motion Quilting launch pad last week, so if you want a close-up video, go back into the Quilting Rockstars and find that video, okay? Perfect. But dancers, before we go on stage, we're backstage and we're doing this with our hands, right? And that's choreography. We're running through in our heads what's going to happen on the stage. It's going to happen on a big grand scale out on the stage, on the quilt, but we're going to work on it in a small space with our hands, with our marker, with our practice sandwich. This is our warm up. This is rehearsal. Okay. So step one, doodle. Let me answer these questions about doodling and rhythm and music and all the things. Uh, these are great questions, you guys. I love it so much. Judy says, like, about, like to think about quilting, like riding a bike. Too slow is awkward and wobbly. Judy, I like that analogy even better. That is the same thing when you're on a bike, you will lay that sucker down and scrape your elbow if you don't pedal through that curve. That's brilliant. I like that analogy even better. Um, Patricia said you have to be careful with music. If the beat changes, stick, stitching can change. Yes. You got to work on, um, you got to work on that perfect quilting playlist, you know? I don't know that I have a perfect quilting playlist. I quilt to audiobooks, which is not terribly exciting, I suppose, but... You can also look, I think on Amazon and I feel like other streaming services have this too. You can actually look up things that is a specific beats per minute so you can keep that rhythm pretty the same. You know what I mean? Let's see. Lauren says, I love cross country skiing and that's the pace I'm telling myself to keep my hands when I try promotion quilting. Foot faster though. Yes, yeah, see, I love it. Brilliant. Okay, so in our how to practice free motion quilting, step one really is set up your machine. Step two, warm up on paper. Step three, we're gonna to move to a practice sandwich, okay? Working on the practice sandwich is gonna have two steps. So you know, step A is gonna be checking our tension. Step B is gonna be actually filling in this space, okay? Now I'm gonna do both with a meander.
but we'll flip the sandwich over and look at the stitches part way through, okay? Again, these stitches are not going to be visible because I taught this motif to you guys last week with some under the needle video inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. Today we're talking about the big picture of practice procedures so that you guys can build up your own kind of rehearsal strategy for your quilts. Now, working here on this industrial machine, my feed dogs are down. And the stitch length, I think inherently is set to zero. It's not actually listed on this screen on my machine. This is different from the domestic I was working on last week. The domestic that I was working on during the free motion quilting launch pad, I leave my feed dogs up and I don't change my stitch length. So again, I said this last week and I'll say it again and again and again, work on what works for you, right? It might be that your machine, the tension goes to crap if you lower your feed dogs. It might be on your machine, the tension goes to crap if you don't, right? And you gotta figure out what works for your machine, what works for your style, what do you feel comfortable with? There are very few strictly black and white answers when it comes to free motion quilting. It's all about knowing different methods and techniques and figuring out what works well for you. All right, now I've quilted this nice little section here. I'm flipping it over. These stitches are looking beautiful. That's something I really like about this industrial machine is it holds tension really, really well. Um, one of the challenges that I found with especially newer computerized domestics is they don't necessarily hold tension super well. So you do have to make sure that you check them every single time and that you kind of fiddle with them and make sure they stay nice. So this is a pretty small practice sandwich, it's just 12 by 12. I really like fat quarter size, um, but if I'm cutting from yardage like I have been for these, then I have a 12 by 12 ruler and it's just an easy size to cut and it's a nice warm up size, honestly. So depending on the motif, you can fill in this whole practice sandwich or just a portion of it. I'm feeling good about this meander and about my stitch quality, so I'm probably going to work my way over to the edge and only fill in about half the sandwich right now. Now I mentioned this Saturday night, I'm going to mention it again because it's important. Working on a bigger throat space like this with an easy motif like a meander, you will notice that I keep my hands further apart. That's because I have the room to maneuver because of this big old throat space, right? Last week we talked about um, having our hands in a triangle. And if you're working on a domestic with a typical throat space, which is about five and a half inches, that's going to be really important for maintaining control of your quilt in order to get nice clean stitches. So Karen, this machine is at zero for the stitch length on my um, domestic machine. It's usually at 3.5. As far as what tension would I start with, whatever's kind of your like where it goes when it turns on, right? And you're gonna, just going to adjust visually. There's not a magic number when it comes to tension. That's one of the hardest things. It's like I wish I could be like, make sure you start at such and such number. It'll probably be fine from there. Well, one problem is like uh, tension on my domestic machine is measured from 1 to 10, but tension on this machine is measured from like zero to 350, right? Like there's, it's like the, you can't compare tension numbers across machines. That's not how it works. So you need to simply look at your machine and, and what I taught you last week about looking at the stitches and the stitch quality and make those visual decisions visually. Um, there's not a formula. I wish there was. It would mean tension wouldn't be such a scary thing for so many quilters, but hopefully Understanding how tension works on that tug of war between your top thread and your bobbin thread has made it feel more accessible. It gets so much easier with practice. So much easier. Yep. All right, let's see. Make sure I didn't miss something. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm simply going to raise this up. I filled in about half this practice sandwich. This is a simple motif. I'm feeling good about my warm up with this. My stitch quality is looking good. I have two long stitches where I was talking and not paying attention to my foot pedal speed. 
Because that happens to all of us. Absolutely, Karen. I know that's not a fun answer. Like, I wish I could be like, here's the magic formula. Uh, but it really, it's a skill and it's a practice thing, not a magic formula, unfortunately. Um, yes, Lisa, that sounds like a great place to be starting. All right, let's see where we're at on this so far. I don't know if y'all will be able to see this texture. But we have quilted a couple of blocks. All right, I see where we're at. Potentially, anyway. Did I bury my... This must be where I buried that thread because I made the video. So I, like, I don't know why I would have buried the thread in the middle of quilting. But I think it was because I made that video for you guys. Okay, so notice... I'm moving the bulk of the quilt up onto my table. That's why we want to have a table behind our machine, if at all possible. The other thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to unplug my laptop. Because what I really don't want to have happen is accidentally manage to quilt that cord to the back of my quilt. I feel like that could be a disaster. Let's see, Lorenda says, as a beginner for motion quilting, what questions should I be asking at this point? You don't know what you don't know. Um, Lorenda, did you do the launch pad with me last week? Because you did the launch pad, I feel like we've handled a lot of the big questions. And I think one of the things I would say with free motion quilting is like, don't worry too much about what you don't know, right? Like if you know that like you need a free motion quilting foot, you need to adjust your tension, you're off to a great start, honestly. <laughs> like, just take it a step at a time. Your skills are gonna build. As questions pop up, ask them. Like, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm in the Quilting Rockstars. That's my job inside Free Motion Quilting Academy. Um, and your fellow rock stars will help as well. That's another part of this process of kind of baby stepping our way in that we start with paper and practice sandwiches before we're on big old quilts. <coughs> is to, to kind of hit some of those questions before it's in a real life situation. That being said, there aren't a ton of questions to be asking about the meander once you've got your machine set up. If you have them, I'm happy to answer them, but don't be afraid of like, what if I didn't ask the right question? You're doing great, you're doing awesome. Jane says, I'm gonna try quilting with my hands apart because you have a large throat space. Oh yeah, Jane, pull them apart a little bit and see how that feels control-wise, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so Lorenda, you're going to get a ton of your questions answered in there, and I don't remember, forgive me, there's a lot of y'all. I don't remember if you've jumped into Free Motion Quilting Academy yet, um, but if you do, we review all that information at the beginning of Free Motion Quilting Academy, because basics are basics, you know what I mean? So, you're doing great. You're doing awesome. Everything I'm seeing is that you are asking all the right questions. The biggest thing is to put it into practice. Try it out. Don't be afraid to experiment. That's the thing that will really stop your free motion quilting journey in its tracks is if you're just too scared to actually quilt. You know, we got to take that fear. We got to put it in the trunk of the car so we can enjoy our road trip. You know what I mean? All righty. So I have arranged my quilt. I've made sure that I know where the edges of my quilt are so they don't get quilted to the back. Ask me how I know that's important. I'm going to put my gloves on, and we're going to take this for a spin. Now, looking at this, I need to come up in here and quilt this section of this block so that I don't end up wandering off and forgetting about it. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and down to the center, around, and back up this outer edge, okay? Which I know you guys can't see this edge, but that's okay. When we're working with an all-over motif like this, which I'm adding a couple of little swirls in, but you know, for the most part, an all-over motif, that's how you're going to handle your quilting plan is when you sit down to quilt, you're like, all right, what's the first section I'm going to quilt? How am I going to work this? Right? And then from there, you'll take it section by section. What needs to be filled in? Where am I entering? Where am I exiting? You'll notice, if you were with me last week, 
One of the biggest distinctions that a throat space will make, and this will not come as a shock to any of you, is ease of mobility. And what that means is I'm able to move this quilt underneath my needle much more quickly than I was on my domestic. I don't have to rearrange it quite as often. That doesn't make this machine better, but it is one of the things that as my free motion quilting journey progressed, made me feel ready to make the investment in a larger machine. If you are just getting started on your free motion quilting journey, I really don't, um, I don't urge you to be going, oh my gosh, I need a new machine. That'll solve all my problems. A new machine will not solve all your problems, okay? Typically, but 99% of the time, a new machine is not going to solve all your problems. Typically, patience and practice are going to be the things that solve free motion quilting challenges. Deciding whether or not you want to upgrade to a bigger machine from whatever you're quilting on right now, that should be a decision that's informed by how much you free motion quilt, not by wanting it to be easier, right? Because I know too many quilters that were like, well, if I just had a bigger machine, if I just had a mid arm, if I just had a long arm, I would quilt my own quilts. But the reality is they just didn't enjoy it. They would rather quilt by check, right? But if you want to quilt your own quilt, start with the machine that you have, put in that little bit of extra elbow grease, and once you get kind of thoroughly hooked, then you can see if it's the best fit for you to upgrade your machine, all right? I want you to start with what you have and not just be looking to, do I need to spend a bunch of money, right? The goal right now is to save you money by being able to quilt your own quilts and boost your confidence and your sense of excitement around finishing your quilts. Um, Jennifer says, don't be afraid to ask some simple questions. Amen. We are all here for the simple questions. Judy says, do you stop in the center or try to go to the edges as you, as you change areas? So I'll go to the edge. Like here, I'm going to quilt down this edge. And then I'll work my way back into the center and then kind of back out to the edge. And at some point, i got to remember to get that center block. That's probably not super helpful. But I'm truly just meandering my way around this quilt. Yeah. Um... Lorenda says, I can see where knowing where you're going before going in would really help. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what you got to ask before you make big decisions. And that's exactly what I'm getting at with the machine conversation, too, is like, let's tackle one big thing at a time. And the first big thing is learning the motor skills of free motion quilting. And then you can make decisions about machines. But I say that because, I mean, to be quite frank, I get, I get comments of machine envy often, but I want you guys, I want to reassure you, and I want you to know, I quilted on the little singer I showed you last week for years. I've only had this machine about a year and a half. Like, I, for years, was on my little singer. It is a beautiful machine. I've done great work on it. It is slower, but also, like, this is my full-time job. Now, quilting does not have to be your full-time job in order to treat yourself to a large machine. This is just not the be-all, end-all. Does that make sense? I've got students who are working on everything from featherweights to long arms. I mean, and like truly run the gamut. Kate, my dear, hello! I'm so glad you're here! All right, so, so far with our free motion quilting practice, we have set up our machine, we have warmed up on paper, we have warmed up on a practice sandwich, and then, because this is a motif that we're feeling pretty confident about, ooh, I'm about to put myself into a corner. Because this is a machine we're, or a motif we're feeling pretty confident about, and because we have a quilt in progress, we are taking that motif to a finished quilt. You will not work on a proper quilt every single practice session, but you will do that more frequently as you progress in your free motion quilting journey, right? Like, there really is a time where it's like, I'm just filling up pieces of paper and I'm filling up practice sandwiches. But a couple of weeks in, and for some of you who were brave and courageous who had accepted my challenge, you learned your meander and your swirl last week and you've already finished your first quilt, right? Lisa, you got this. All right, the lizard side of your brain is trying to keep you alive. Let's talk about the psychology of this just a little bit, right? This is where fight, flight, or freeze lives and new things are perceived as a threat, right? And my guess from the way you worded that comment is you're feeling frozen right now. Like, I cannot get into action. I cannot go practice, all right? You gotta take that lizard part of your brain and remind it, this is not a life or death situation. We are learning a new motor skill. We are learning a new creative skill. 
I deeply appreciate you trying to keep me alive, but I am not in life-threatening danger. It just feels like a big step. So please go over here and I'm gonna practice, okay? You are in community. One of the biggest things, I know you know, sometimes it's just good to hear this, right? Psychology tells us that for every negative thing we hear, we have to hear like 11 or 17 positive things, right? Our lizard's brains tell us lots of negative things. So I'm gonna just take this moment and speak some positive words over all of y'all, okay? Learning free motion quilting is not a life-threatening endeavor. Most of the time, it's not even a quilt-threatening endeavor, right? You know what it is? It's a pride-threatening endeavor, okay? We want to be really good at things, and it is scary to not be good at first, but you will be very, very good at free motion quilting. You just gotta hang tight for a hot second. All right, tell that lizard it's gonna be okay. Tell that lizard that you are safe in community, that you're gonna get your questions answered, and that that lizard is gonna to get to celebrate when these quilts are done. And I love these things everyone's saying. Helen is saying amen. Marie said, I did it and so can you. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so here's what I wanna know. Those of you who are here, Joe Beth, you don't have to listen to that lizard. I love it. Okay, so those of you who are here, who have taken Free Motion Quilting Academy, okay? Oh, you are so welcome, Kate who took your free motion quilting academy or who took the launch pad with me last week and have quilted your first quilt. Put your hands up in the comments. All right. Yep. Jennifer's here. How do you pep talk your lizard? Share some advice. We all have to pep talk that lizard. That mean girl in our head, she wants to win, but she doesn't get to win, right? Lizard had to crawl before it could walk. There was once a time when you could not write your own name. You learned how to write your own name. You can learn how to free motion quilt. The skills are remarkably similar. Remarkably similar. Okay? Kick me girl to the curb. That's right. Pep talk down there. Because here's the thing. Lisa, I want you to see all these folks who have gone before you. Because if I can learn and they can learn, you can learn. We're in this together. I see these hands up. Look at that. I love it. All right. Hands up, pep talks, all the things. I'm going to quote just a little further on this. Alright, so what I did here, guys, is I quilted down to the edge, I quilted along the edge, and now I'm making my way back into the center. Alright, Lisa, you're so good. Oh, I love it. Kate Tony says, I get it all the time. I talk about a certain friend who always snaps me out of it. Oh, hey there. <laughs> That's a mutual thing. Because here's the thing. Alright, Kate just brought up something really beautiful. So Kate, Kate Tony, who's here, she, she's my girl. And we pep talk each other. And that's the thing. This is the beautiful thing about the community of the Quilting Rockstars, the community of the Free Motion Quilting Academy Facebook group, is you do that for each other, right? There's going to be days where one of y'all comes in the group and you're like, I just need a pep talk, like big time. And someone else is going to pep talk you. And the next day, they might come to the group and be like, my turn, need a pep talk, right? We need to do this in real life, and we need to do it with Free Motion Quilting, all right? Love it. I'm just really excited about this gif that you shared, Patricia. I cannot wait to watch this. Cindy says, step by step, have a basic routine each time and gets me in the right headspace. Exactly. So, Cindy, I love that you mentioned that because that's exactly what we're working through today is we're reassuring that lizard. We start with our machine set up. We work on some paper. We work on a practice sandwich. Then we work on our quilt after we've had a chance to calm that part of our brain down and say, see, I know how to do this. This isn't a big and scary thing anymore. It's just a new skill that I'm developing. Love it. Sandy says, use a timer. Get up and walk away when you want. You come back. You'll want to sit for a little bit longer. I love it. Karen says, I got mad at mine and shut the machine off and walked away. Karen, that is fair. Who was with me in the thread painting workshop when Jehoshaphat just could not keep it together? And I said that as soon as our time together was done, I was going to turn them off and like, go have a drink and be very mad, right? Like sometimes we put our machines in timeout. That's okay, we're allowed to do that. And then you get to come back. Lisa said, were you really? I don't even know if I remember this, Lisa Moose. <laughs> 
I was a person that went and tried new things if I wasn't certain I could do them. And then came Free Mojo Quilting. Um, I hope all of you saw Lisa's Rainbow Bargello quilt that she finished this weekend that she quilted with gorgeous feathers. If she can learn it, so can you. Oh, Winifred, I love it. Your 20-year-old daughter loves all the free motion quilting that you put into her quilt. Jo Beth did six placemats. Deb said, often on the summer, I was doodling. Often, I was surprised the meander was so much easier. It's the doodling. I tell you, it's so much like handwriting. I love it. Guys, you guys are the best pep talkers. This is phenomenal. I See, Jillian, exactly. I'm like, I will be having an IPA and swearing if you need me. Like, there's a time for that. And then that's when you jump in the Facebook group and say, guys, I put my machine in timeout. Can you please, like, talk me down? Right? It's a good thing my machine is big. I can't chuck it out the window when I'm mad. Uh, Patricia says, my tension looks good, but I have trouble with the thread breaking. So my guess, Patricia, is that um, I'm going to guess your tension is just a hair too tight. That is what frequently will cause that. Loosen it up just a smudge so that your stitches still look good. Um, but see if it helps with the thread breaking. If that doesn't help, start looking for burrs. Make sure your um, uh, bobbin race is really cleaned out. All those good things. Aww. We're up. Hey, we all pep talk each other, babe. Sometimes the machine has to be in timeout. Exactly. And then, exactly, you go put your big girl pants on and you come back and you're like, I'm in charge. Thank you and good night. Right? Okay. So, with all this, let's do one more review and then I'm going to talk to you guys about your next step. So, when we practice free motion quilting, we start with our setup. We baby step our way into this cold swimming pool. First, we work on paper. Then we work on a practice sandwich. Then if we're feeling confident things are going well, we get to do some work on a real quilt. When we are done, depending on kind of where you're at, like I'll probably just leave this quilt under the needle and I'll come back to it later. But I wanna make sure I'm gonna mention this rather than demo it because it won't be super visible behind this table. Um, when you're done, please make sure that you get up and you stretch, stretch your back side to side, touch your toes, stretch your legs. The blog post that I've shared with you guys today has a link where you can go look at some hip flexor stretches. That's these muscles right here. They connect to the top of your leg and they wrap all the way around to your lower back. So if you're having any kind of hip or lower back tightness or pain, you probably need to stretch your hip flexors from sitting so much, okay? So when you're done quilting, you can either leave this or set your practice stuff up for the next time. Make sure you get up and stretch and please make sure you drink water, okay? Quilting is a full body workout. We're doing core work, holding our posture up. We're using our shoulders and elbows to maneuver the quilt. Our legs are working to hold us steady and to keep that presser on the presser or on the foot pedal. Like don't discount the work your body's doing here, okay? So that's gonna be your wind downs. Get up and stretch and hydrate, all right? Now, if you are here with me today and you're like, well, I think maybe I can do this. I think maybe this free motion cool thing, thing can be fun. And also I want to hang out with these cool people some more because y'all are awesome. Let me tell you what your next steps are. If you're just ready to jump in with both feet, go sign up for Free Motion Quilting Academy. The Academy is enrolling now, but enrollment only lasts till Saturday. That's only a couple of days, you guys, and I don't want you to miss out. The class will be back in January, so it's not a super long wait, but remember what I told you at the beginning. 2020 has been a heck of a year for all of us. Why not take it by the shoulders and say, look, you have been a hard year, but I'm gonna find a beautiful thing. I'm gonna find a new skill, I'm going to finish my quilts and I'm going to make new friends and I'm going to finish this year strong so that when we get to the end of 2020, I'm not just racing face first into 2021. I'm able to look back and have gratitude for the way that I grew as a quilter in the midst of this difficult season. Okay. So that's option number one. Option number two is if you're like, I still have questions about free motion quilting Academy. I still have questions about figuring out what to quilt where I have a free masterclass, your free motion quilting secret sauce. There is one today, there is one Thursday, there is one Saturday that you can still sign up for, okay? So please go jump into those. Um, a little sidebar, if you signed up for tomorrow's masterclass, watch for an email from me this afternoon. I've got kind of an update for you guys. But as I mentioned, there are still signups open for Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I would love to see you inside those masterclasses. They are so much fun. Also, Kate's there too, so you get to hang out with both of us. All right. Any questions before I wrap up for today? The comments went kind of quiet, but I just want to make sure that that's not like from a glitch. I want to make sure that I've answered your questions. As I sit here hydrating, 
because it's important. Let's see. I don't think I've missed any. Thank you so much for being here with me, you guys. Again, everything I've talked about of these procedures for practicing free motion quilting are available on the blog that I've linked in the caption of this video. Go refer to that if you need a reminder about what we've talked through. I'm so excited to see you in the masterclass later and to see you inside Free Motion Quilting Academy. Um, the masterclass is just, I'm gonna be teaching for about 30 or 40 minutes and then I'll be sharing with you about Free Motion Quilting Academy, Deb. That's a great question. It's a free class. I'm super pumped. I made cool slides that you're gonna enjoy. Betty, welcome! I'm so excited this is your first time! So, Tanya, Free Motion Quilting Academy orientation will be making sure everyone's in the Facebook group, making sure you have your Kajabi login, making sure your machine is set up. Just some housekeeping things um, that I realized if I don't do that before I start teaching inside the academy, that first week feels really overwhelming. So, those of you who took Free Motion Quilting Academy with me in the spring will probably remember making sure all the tech was sorted and starting to learn motifs felt like a lot. So, I've separated those two things this week. It just gives everyone a chance to kind of get settled and get what they need. All right, guys, wonderful questions. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I look forward to seeing you on the blog, in the masterclass, and inside Free Motion Quilting Academy so we can continue this journey together. You, my dear, are a Free Motion Quilting rock star. And if you don't believe it yet, I'll believe it for you as you work on your journey. Big love, and I'll see you soon.